ahead and get started. Okay, I have hit the record button. Welcome to Fresh Start. We are now on uh, lesson five. It's called God, the Holy Spirit. And uh, just to go through for people who will watch this video later, um, this is a production for a Bible study of Southeast Seventh-day Adventist Church in Cleveland, Ohio. You can just search for us on Facebook, YouTube, Roku, or just look for Southeast. Please mute yourself. Look for Southeast on the web, se7day.org. And I am Pastor Stan Hood. Those are my big rosy cheeks right there on the left of your screen. And we have several of our church members here tonight, uh, both senior members and new members uh, to discuss our topic tonight. You can also get this book yourself at the Adventist Book Center, uh, AdventistBookCenter.com. What we're studying out of is a special edition of Sign of the Times called We Believe. And we'll show you this cover in case you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. All you have to do is type in We Believe um, at the AdventistBookCenter.com. Or you can reach out to us and just ask for a copy. All right, so it's time for to, it's the start of something new. Okay, it is the start of something new. We are on lesson five, God the Holy Spirit. We've already done the Holy Scriptures. You can go back and find these, the Trinity, God the Father, and God the Son. You can find all of those videos on our social media. And we are recording tonight, God, the Holy Spirit. It is Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. You can also find that flyer information, how to connect with us through uh, our website, se7day.org. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to have our opening prayer, and then we're going to read and then ask our participants to come in and, uh, and join us in the conversation. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity for us to study your word. You said uh, that you are inviting us to come and seek wisdom. If any of us ask, lack wisdom, that we ought to ask you. And one of the primary ways of asking you is not just prayer but also gathering together and reading the word of God. And that's what we'll do tonight. We invite your presence and your authority over this session. We thank you in Jesus name, amen. All right, um, the Holy Spirit is God and Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit, uh, one of many descriptions is called the spirit of truth. And so let's have a conversation, a little, little reading. Uh, let's have a volunteer now come in and read what is on the screen. I'll read. As one of the members of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit is a person fully divine. He had an active part with the Father and the Son in the creation of the world. And since then, he has been intimately involved in the plan of salvation. Okay, very good. I like the way you read. So the question right off the top is, who is the Holy Spirit? And as she read so nicely there, the Holy Spirit is also God. So we have divided this up into three sections. And we will begin with this second section by going into detail what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. What Jesus said, uh, sister, if you can continue, if you would read uh, on the screen for me, I'd appreciate it. Jesus' teaching about the Holy Spirit is recorded in John 14, 15, and 16. He is called the Spirit of Truth, John 14, 26. He will teach you all things. Jesus said, and he 
will remind you of everything I have said to you. John 14, 26. All right, all right. Any thoughts about that? Anybody have a testimony in reference to the Holy Spirit being a teacher and the spirit of truth? It's okay if you don't, just thought I'd ask if anybody has that testimony. I like the way Jesus glorified his father and the Holy Spirit. There was not a, a sense or a spirit of division amongst them. He said, he will teach you all things. He will bring to your remembrance everything I've taught you. So he was not competing with the spirit. Amen. Good point. Good point. Um, uh, and also the um, Holy Spirit is our conscience. Um, let's us know, you know, when you, you may be veering off the the path the straight and narrow and um he'll let you know you know you know you don't need to be doing that you know that's when the holy spirit talks to us okay all right well this is an interesting way to put it that the holy spirit is our conscience and i, I would just add to that just for clarity if it's in accordance with the word of god you know some of us might have a bad conscience <laughs> You know, so the things that are good, that are perfect, that are true, that glorify God, uh, speaking to us on the inward parts. I believe that's what Donna is saying is the Holy Spirit. Audrey had her hand up. Well, well, you know, I wasn't finished yeah. yet, Pastor. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So she had her hand up. Well, well, go, it, go ahead and finish and then Audrey behind you. It wasn't. Um, I mean, and <clears throat> when you look at the way that the world is changing today, um, uh, and I believe that it is changing like that because God is drawing his Holy Spirit out of this world. Um, and that is what used to actually, you know, kind of keep people on a, on a dull roar, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, to, 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 to like I said, to be the conscience, you know, you, you see many horrible things going on today and it's getting worse and worse and worse. And I believe that that's because God is drawing his Holy Spirit out of this world. So people are just like, you know, Satan is taking over. I'm done. Wait a minute. I'm going to say something, Barb. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, when he says teach, the word teach, meaning that he's the great teacher. And he says the spirit of truth. So when we seek knowledge we are to seek the holy spirit in uh giving us this knowledge of truth and we find that uh his word is truth and so therefore when we open the scriptures we ask the holy spirit to teach us to make us understand all truth and i like that with the scriptures that were given here on the screen Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yes, go ahead. I didn't realize I was muted. Go ahead. Pastor? Go ahead, Barb. Oh, I just wanted to say um, I experienced the Holy Spirit in my life in a most uh, powerful and overwhelming way. When I went to, my mother-in-law and I went to our um, tent, um, a tent meeting, and um, Elder Cleveland was uh, teaching, and he was teaching truths that I had never heard before, and I know it was the Holy Spirit that led me into more truth, and um at the conclusion of that particular sermon, uh, and he asked if you wanted to make a decision uh, to follow the Lord, I made the largest X on the back of the card because I was just, I just felt so overwhelmed 
my my heart was just open, and I know it was the Holy Spirit because uh, Scripture says it's the Holy Spirit that leads us into all truth. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And I appreciate all the comments. I, again, I was talking, responding to Donna earlier than Audrey. I'm sorry you missed that, but we're just going to move on. Thank you for the comments. All right. So uh, let's get another reader here. What Jesus said in section two. He came specifically to testify about Jesus, John 15, 26. And because he is not limited by neither time nor space, he can be or he can represent Jesus to the world anywhere, anytime. All right. So this is this part is interesting. One of the questions I get about prayer all the time is who do you talk to and when? <laughs> do you talk to the Father? Do you talk to Jesus? Do you talk to the Holy Spirit? And so uh, the lesson now is hinting at why people can somehow get confused about who you talk to. Let's, let's go to, let's see here. Um, if, I think that was Sister Val. Can you read this text for us? But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Be, oh, he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. John 16, 13. So someone mentioned earlier, I forget who it was. So please forgive me about the harmony between the father, son and the Holy Spirit. And that harmony is such that it, you can lose sight of who is doing what. And I think when Jesus says this about the Holy Spirit, he brings clarity to the function, but there is humility in the approach of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is somewhat subtle and he does not promote self. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes. When the Holy Spirit wants to teach us, he wants to teach us about Jesus. He mm -hmm. wants to teach us about the Father. He doesn't have ego there where he's saying, I want the credit. And so this may cause some confusion about when we're praying. And you probably heard uh, uh, that in, let's go back here, because I want to talk about this slide. You probably heard it even your, in yourself or in others where they kind of get turned around while they're praying. They start out talking to one and end up talking to the other and then it's in Jesus' name. You pray to Jesus in Jesus' name. So it can be, <laughs> it can get a little twisted in there and I don't think it's by intentional, but this is the reason the Holy Spirit does not throw a party in the name of the Holy Spirit. He is uh, a pointer, a teacher, a guider that leads you to, to, um, to, to, to Jesus and to the Father. And so uh, while God is presented in masculine form in this way, just in this function, there, uh, if there was any uh, fem feminine uh, aspects of God in, in, in what, and just in role in this specific, specific function, because I want to create no confusion. Um, it would be here because of taking a passive role to take the passive approach is a feminine trait. For instance, wisdom takes is a feminine word. The word wisdom is female is, is passion is, is uh, passive, meaning that it settles in over time. It's, it's not as direct and blunt, but just as powerful. Did I lose anybody? So when you talk about, nobody said anything, so I'm just gonna keep on talking. So when you talk about the roles of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, Jesus is certainly out front as the, as the um, face of God. 
and the Father is the authority and the power behind Jesus. That the Holy Spirit is in the help meet role to help you digest and understand and empower you to receive what Jesus promised you. Any thoughts about that? Oh, I see a hand. Yes. Good. That wait a minute. There's a hand. Go ahead, Diane. Uh, it just re makes reference to Proverbs eight when we call when we're thinking about Lady Wisdom. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it's kind of like it connects to that 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 feminine aspect to wisdom. Yeah, and I think it's important to talk about it because um, uh, the work of uh, the work of establishing um, a faith or stab establishing a doctrine based organization that represents God, that work is masculine. However, there are passive uh, aspects to that work. And that's why Eve comes out of the side of Adam and they both are the image of God together. It's not an issue where Adam is the image of God. Adam and Eve are the image of God together. And um, the only reason it has any place in what we're talking about is that all of us need to be affirmed and that we play vital roles in, um, in the gospel and in God's plan of salvation. Sister uh, Elder Antoinette, go right ahead. I agree with uh, what's being said, but, and I also see it as um, the father on the throne and the only way to the father is through Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, how do we get to Christ? The Holy Spirit brings us to Christ, helps us understand what Jesus has already taught, what he's teaching, what he's about then he brings us to Jesus and Jesus takes us to the father. Well, that is absolutely perfect. There ain't nothing else to be said. Let's go on to the next slide. But that is, that is it. That is it. Okay, so now let's bring in the church. Okay, uh, so let's, uh, Elder Stone, you're talking. You mind reading the slide in front of us? Uh, what Jesus said. In addition to working with the disciples, enabling them to carry out their mission, the Holy Spirit is among unconverted people, convicting them of sin and righteousness and judgment. John 16, 8. Wow, well, this requires discussion, but let me bring in Dr. Pam first, because I don't want her to lose her thought. Go ahead. Yeah, so we were talking about drawing, but in uh, John 12, 32, Jesus is speaking and he says, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Jesus draws us too. Is that not yeah. correct? Yes, yes. The, the, um, yeah, we, we're going to get to that in, in the, in the lesson, but yes, that is correct. Uh, and the question I guess would be is how is Jesus lifted up? And we'll, we'll get to that. We're gonna run right into it. Just hold that thought mm -hmm, and we're mm -hmm. gonna discuss it in just a moment. Uh, I have something to say. Now that question that you just said, is that, does that warn an answer at this time or later on? Well, well, the slide that we have in front of us is what we're gonna discuss now. And mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if, we're, we're going, if you're talking about that, go right ahead. Or otherwise, you wait till we get to that part that Elder Pam just brought up. We're going to get to it in the study. Okay. Um, okay. Did somebody put a question in? Well, I don't know where it fits, but it was talking about, I thought you were talking about the, the part that the Holy Spirit played um, uh, in the church. Yes. Yeah, this is, yeah, we're going into that discussion. Uh, right now, we're dealing with... Uh, dealing with the slide that's in front of us, what, uh, what was just read. 
Uh, okay, so let's read it again, and just to make sure we're on the same page. And we're going to walk right into what you want to talk about. It's in following slides. So let's just walk into it one step at a time. In addition to working with, and I see a typo, I hate typos, with the disciples, enabling them to carry out their mission, the Holy Spirit is among unconverted people. Now, this is extremely important because now we're going to talk about the gathering. But up until now, we've been talking about individuals and, uh, and it's kind of focused on living a righteous life, being led by the Holy Spirit to Christ, to the Father. Now, this can be quite controversial because I've heard people say, and maybe you've heard this too, that unless you're confessing your sins, the Holy Spirit won't be with you while you're lost. Anybody heard that? Yes. All right. As well as even if you're saved and you go into a bar or a club or something, the Holy Spirit is going to leave you and you just on your own. Right. Right. Well, well, here's the thing. Any inclination toward right or righteousness is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so if the Holy Spirit does not deal with you when you're lost, unless you're confessing your sins, then no one comes to Christ. Because without the Holy Spirit, you won't be led to confess your sins. Our nature is fallen and wicked and evil. By nature, we are self-centered and we protect self, even to the point where we will lie to ourselves just so we can be right. Right? And that's not really a debate. That's just a fact. You know, we're born into sin and shaped by iniquity. So what is the way out? And, and this is so important. And, um, you know, the lessons following when we talk about creation and the nature of humanity, this is a very key point right here. The Holy Spirit is among unconverted people convicting them of sin. Kind of goes back to Donna's comment about the Holy Spirit being our conscious, mm. right? Uh, so uh, any thoughts on that before we go to the next slide? Okay, everybody's- Just quiet. wanna add one statement oh, that correct. it's not just the, uncom well, unconverted people is not synonymous with unchurched people. Hmm. It means even us, us church people who are unconverted on different points. Good point. Good point. Thank That's you. why P, uh, the Lord told Peter, when you're converted. And hmm. so we know from continuing the scripture reading, uh, the gospels, Peter still had to be converted on some, some more stuff. Yeah. In, in the book of Acts, he still had to be converted. And so unconverted people... It is all of us at any point in time. Yes, indeed. Great point. Wow. Sister Diane? I guess that's why I was wondering, how would you define converted person? Well, I think it was just explained uh, perfectly. The first issue is justification. That's the first thing that the Holy Spirit leads us to. You know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just, it is an acknowledgement of who God is and surrendering to the fact that we are subject to him. He is our creator. He is our God. Salvation is through Jesus. That's justification. Now, sanctification is an entirely different thing. Justification is in that moment, whenever that moment is. But sanctification, however, is working on the entire person, the whole man, going deep into you a little at a time uh, over your lifetime and over my lifetime. And so when you ask the question about converted and unconverted, uh, we like to simplify it, people who believe in God and people who don't. But really, as it was stated, Peter was a great example um, there are many things. If God would give it to us all at once, we probably wouldn't try. So it's by grace, God deals with us one issue at a time as much as we can handle. Uh, Sister Donna, go right ahead. Well, if um, 
uh, if we're talking about um, going beyond talking about how he works with us as individuals, um, he works with us as the church as a whole um, in giving spiritual gifts to the church and empowering the church to bear witness to Christ. Yes, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. We're going one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry, okay. Pastor. Yeah, that's why I say we're dealing with what's on the screen. But the, I thought you said, how does he, how does he yeah, deal yeah. with the church? Yes, what's on the screen, one step at a time. Because remember, we want to make this easy for people who haven't had these lessons at all. So we want to keep, we want them to keep up with us. We're going there. Well, well, you know what, so I must just be off because I thought I heard you say how he deals yes. with us as the church. Yes, but this aspect of the church, meaning okay. how, does, how does God build a church? Okay, so, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. Uh, it's, uh, I just, I'm just, I'm not really talking to you. I'm talk, talking through you to the person who's new to this. That's all. So a good example of what I'm talking about, Donna, is on uh, Mount Sinai, God starts the church with one fugitive. Just one guy who's out of order. He's a murderer, a runaway, and he's lying to himself about his calling, right? God starts the church to him. And where does he send him? To people who are breaking all 10 commandments and say, you're my people, come out of Egypt and worship me. So looking at this line that's highlighted, doesn't he start with the unconverted? Yes. So in building the church, we cannot forget this because sometimes we are so far away from our first encounter with Christ that we begin to make judgments about who's worthy of certain levels of being the church. But we must never forget where God starts with everybody because we're bad enough as individuals. Oh, it's a mess if we come together the wrong way. Right? And, and these bring challenges in the church when we're dealing with each, each other not being led by the Holy Spirit. And, and it's going to make sense when we get to some more slides. Okay. So, uh, so, so let's, let's, let's keep going. Since Donna, since you were talking, can you read this one? Can you see it? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, go right ahead. We tend to understand less about the person and work of the Holy Spirit than we do other members of the Godhead. That's because the Spirit's work is to make known Jesus and the Father rather than himself. Yes, indeed. So we, we've been discussing this all along, right? And, uh, and, and I'm going to give you the, the answer to that puzzle uh, that I said we often get that question I get it all the time. Is it okay to pray directly to the Holy Spirit? Or should we be praying, should we pray to the Father? Should we be praying to Jesus? But we're praying in Jesus' name. This is the source of that uh, type of uh, ambiguity that takes place. So let's get to the section you've been dying to get to. What the Spirit does for us. This is our last section, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be quick. Um, so uh, let's get another reader because we're now talking, we're moving from us as individuals and we're going to start building the church now. And, um, and prayerfully, if we take this to heart, many of the issues we have in brick and mortar churches will be minimized or go, to, go away altogether if we take this counsel. So what the spirit does for us, can we get a new reader? Hello. Okay. Somebody okay. raised your hand. This is, I just see iPhone. I see your brother standing there. You got your hand raised. Go ahead. The Holy Spirit is involved. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought that was somebody else. Go ahead. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is involved in every aspect of our Christian life. When we come to God, it's because the Spirit has been working on our hearts giving us the desire to learn about God and live the way he wants us to. All right. Now, 
Here's it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very good. The uh, Holy Spirit is involved in every aspect of our Christian life. Can you see how this begins to create issues? No. You don't. Okay. It's, please elaborate. I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't have a problem with the Holy Spirit at all because for the last five years, I make sure I include him every day when I'm doing some type of communication because I already realized that without him refreshing my memory, you know, I'm a dumb, I'm a dumb girl. So, you know, mm -hmm. I don't see your problem. All right. But you well, can show well, me it if it's the one. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, oh. you know, we, we're talking about going from unconverted Mm -hmm. trying to live a surrendered life it means that things have to change in right. your life. It, it means that some things that you previously or I previously thought was okay mm -hmm. now I need strength to let that go mm -hmm. this is what I mean by it will cause a problem okay I see another hand go right ahead uh, I start off the day with uh, with prayer so I asked the Holy Spirit to descend upon me. So that way he's walking with me, talking with me and living with me throughout the day. And it shows when I come up against oppositions, I know for certain he's there. And at the end of the day, I can see where he has blessed me and guided me because if I would have had my way about it, things would have been much differently. And so if a lot of other people would be uh, truthful, they'd mm -hmm. say the same thing because the Holy Spirit is working in their Christian life as well. Amen. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. Sister Donna, go ahead. Um, I think I kind of understand what you might be saying, um, how it could be a problem. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's yeah, kind of like um, just our human nature, okay? Our sinful nature um, as human beings, we are first of all, uh, resistant to change, not open to change. When you become involved with the Holy Spirit and um, trying to uh, accept Jesus, you know, it calls for you to change a lot of things in your life. Okay, a lot of sinful things that you've become comfortable in doing. And a lot of people don't want to let that go. So, so in that aspect, it could be a problem. But the Holy Spirit can take care of that, too, because that's when you're supposed to ask him, you know, to help you, to give you clarity of thought so that you can understand, digest and apply his God's word to your life so that you can give up that cigarette smoking, you know, and things like that. Great, great, great comment. Sister Antoinette. Um, how it becomes a problem in the church can sometimes be represented with, well, the Holy Spirit has converted me on, just for an example, uh, since Sister Donna mentioned cigarette smoking, okay, I, I don't smoke. And if I see someone else, or I know of, or I get a whiff of smoke on someone else, it can uh, bring me to a judgmental mindset. You know, yes. you're supposed to be a Christian. How come you haven't overcome that? Yes. Uh, in, in coming in the church, this, you know, when I first came into the church, we had many, many health seminars about healthful living and clean eating. And, <clears throat> and we were expected to be uh, very good, very uh, good specimens of a human body because we're Christians. And it, it, it was, I, I, was, I was made to feel, okay, I'll say it like that. I was made to feel that if you were maybe 5, 10, 20, 40 pounds overweight, according to the health chart, then you were not a converted Christian. You were mm. not uh, the temple of God's Holy Spirit. You were living in rebellion. Mm. And so this is how I can see the statement that you made that coming into the church and in, involved in the church, the Holy Spirit been involved in every aspect of our Christian life and in the church, it can become a problem because we ourselves are quick to judge what other people need to be doing. How come they're not converted on this point? Yeah. And, and, and uh, you converted me, you convicted me of this. 
Now, how come you're not telling them? Well, maybe it, you told us to go and tell, so maybe it's my job to go and tell them your skirt too short. Thank you. Yes, you, you, you got it. This uh -huh. is one of the key ways that something good can become something bad because we don't follow what the scripture says about how we ought to deal with one another. Uh, unless you're up there preaching, <laughs> you should be encouraging to people that you have shown yourself friendly to. It means you have developed a loving and friendly relationship with them. And then you encourage them, but you can never be the Holy Spirit for them. Nah. That is not our job to be the Holy Spirit for other people. So, so that's great comment, Sister Audrey, and then Sister Veronica. Go ahead, Bob. Oh, um, Pastor Audrey's raising a hand for me again. No problem. But Yes. And so a scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. So, you know, I think sometimes we um, think because we know certain portions of the truth that um, we are of such stellar character, but that's not so. You know, because the Holy Spirit is constantly leading us into more truth. At least I've, I've found that to be true in my life. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Sister Veronica? Yes, pretty much everybody's saying the same thing that I'm about to say also. The Holy Spirit is our teacher um, he leads us, he guides us, he points us into the right direction. The Holy Spirit is the one that lives in us to give us that victorious life, to live a um, victorious Christian life. Um, the Holy Spirit, and I will show you where you err, where you go wrong. So, you know, we have to, it is the one that abides in us so that we can live the life that Christ um want us to live, called us to live. And yes, sometimes that's why it's a quench not the Holy Spirit, you know, it's there to teach us and to, 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 to guide us. You know, when I just came into the church also, and, um, you know, one sister say about the clothes, when I just came in, I didn't have no clothes to wear to church, but I wear what I had and the spirit work upon me. And as the spirit work upon me and transform my life, there should be growth also when the spirit is working. We can't say the spirit is working with us and we're still the same way we are 20 years ago. There have to be the growth, you know, we have to be growing and showing that, you know, we are, you know, living in the spirit. That's, that's all. Amen. Very good. Well, I want to share a story with you uh, real quick and then we're going to go to some of the hands. Um, uh, about three years ago, a sister who came to the church, maybe once a month, she came in my office, you know how, well, you don't know because of pandemic, but typically the time I've been pastoring after church, my office would be full of people, just full of people, whether they were getting something to eat or they want to talk or laugh or whatever, that's what happens after church. And this lady walked right up to me and said, you need to lose about a hundred pounds. <laughs> and everybody's mouth hit the floor. Mm. <laughs> everybody's mouth hit the floor. And she said, Pastor, this is not good. She repeated it. This is not good. You need to lose about 100 pounds. Now, it was a good thing Sister Hood wasn't in my office at that time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> she would have lit her right up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't have a it's not like the lady and I had some kind of friendly relationship. She just came, you know, about once a month and she come listen and leave. Well, here's the thing. She need to learn how to talk to people. Right. However, however, the Holy Spirit had already been telling me that I needed to lose about a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. The point of the story is just because 
she said it in a nasty way and she didn't have tact, it does not mean that the Holy Spirit did not use that to affirm what he'd already been saying to me. Right. And so I think sometimes we need to humble ourselves um, and, and, and forget about the messenger and ask a couple of questions. Number one, is it true? Number two, is it helpful? Uh -huh. Right? And, and then uh, number three, Lord, help me with this situation. Speak to me about what just happened. And it uh -huh. doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Because the thing about it is, after that, guess what I did? I went and lost 60 pounds. Oh, great. Now, those, those last 40, y'all hadn't seen them 60. Hopefully, you'll never see them. <laughs> Hopefully, I can, you know, this pandemic kind of slowed me down uh, because I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be careful, but hopefully those other, other 40 will come off because even though she was rude, even though she could have used more tact and told me in private, it doesn't mean she was wrong. Mm. I have to be mature enough and look beyond her bruising my ego and ask these questions, Lord, is it true? Right. Was what she said helpful. Now, Lord, you show me what I need to do with what just happened. Mm -hmm. And if everybody would do that, there'd be less conflict. Okay, okay. I saw Sister Donna and then uh, Dr. Pam. Well, um, one bad thing um, in the Holy Spirit dealing with us is that if we ignore his promptings, mm -hmm. then he, he is grieved. And that's very yeah. bad. That's very we come, bad. We come into that too, Donna. Are you sure you're not looking at my notes going ahead of me? <laughs> <laughs> but you are 100% right. We're coming to that in just a minute. Amen. You are, and, and it bears saying again and again. I just like messing with you. Were, were you finished? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so Dr. Pam. So uh, when the Holy Spirit is involved, in a believer's life, we are indwelled with the Holy Spirit, and it gives us power. Just like the uh, disciples, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you have power to be my witnesses. And the Holy Spirit also intercedes for us. I really like the passage in the Bible where it says sometimes we may not know what we need or want to pray about, but the Holy Spirit takes our moaning and groaning and takes it up to God. So the Holy Spirit does a lot of things. It is our teacher, but it, the Holy Spirit empowers us and intercedes for us. Amen. Very good. So I'm going to take your attention to a couple of things on the screen now. I like to highlight them so I won't forget. The Holy Spirit works on our hearts. That's why we ought to be, we have to be careful with people. I like the example, uh, I think it was Donna gave about the cigarettes and then someone followed it with, okay, now that the Lord has convicted me, now I'm extra sensitive when I smell smoke on somebody and I need them to be convicted as well. Um, maybe they are, but it's, the, it's a fight. I mean, life is tough. Whether you're the richest person in the world or the poorest person in the world, we're all battling something in our character. And what I love about this statement that's on the screen is the spirit works on our hearts and then the spirit gives us the desire to learn about God and live the way that he wants us to. Amen. So, so let's go to the next one. Uh, I think Dr. Pam was the last one talking. Can you, do you mind, can you see the screen? I'm not sure if you're on your phone or you can see. I can see it. Okay. Anytime we want to know more of what the Bible says about God, all we have to do is ask for understanding and the Holy Spirit will guide us to the passages we should study. Now, I know about that. Right. Talk about it then. 
Yeah, you mind saying something about it? Uh, I mentioned it before, and I had a lot of fear about uh, surgery that I was going to have. I mean, I was saying, I'm not going to have the surgery. I'm not going to do this. Uh, I asked God to give me a fleece three or four or five times. And the Holy Spirit directed me to a particular passage in the Bible, Isaiah 41 10, where it talked about not fearing. And with that, I gained total peace and went on ahead and had the surgery. So the Holy Spirit did guide me to that passage to study about not fearing, and it took the fear away. Amen. That's beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else have any experience with the Holy Spirit leading you somewhere in scripture to study? Yeah, every day. All right, I see Sister Audrey's hand. Go right ahead. Go ahead. Pastor, <laughs> I have a brook again. <laughs> That's and right. I know that um, in reading scripture, for me, uh, the Holy Spirit has illumined words. Mm. And I'm reading, I'm reading along, and it, and it jumps off the page. Hmm. These are scriptures that I've read over and over. So I know it's nothing but the Holy Spirit. And when, the, when it happens like that, it's clear. And I'm saying, oh, Lord, that's what you're talking about. Or I'm saying, even in uh, reading scripture and wanting to pray, and, and you, you think you're getting the words your true thoughts from the depths of your heart and then the Holy Spirit will say something and I say that's what I'm talking about Lord <laughs> I know that that is only the gift of the Holy Spirit Amen beautiful beautiful yeah. Sister Diane one of the one of my favorite experiences with the Holy Spirit is when I first started doing Bible studies um, with our pastor in this area I was having a lot of confusion. I always felt like I've always believed in God and I knew, I think I've been in an invisible church for a long, long time. And then I, I, I was just confused about who was God, who was Jesus, who was the Holy Spirit. And then the, the pastor read John, <laughs> the gospel of John. And then at the beginning, he speaks about how there's the three of them together. And then I just made him stop. I said, you need to stop. And I put my hands up and he says, what's the matter? I said, all this time I've been praying to God. I've been praying to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And then it just made my, it just opened me up to not a hierarchy of a Godhead. It brought everything all together and I'll never forget how the Holy Spirit led me to a full understanding to a confusion I had for a long time. Excellent. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, and, and again, that, that question kind of keeps coming back, trying to keep the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit right in our thinking. And, um, and I believe that God understands that. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that there's no penalty if you say Father God or Holy Spirit, help me, Sister Watts was saying, I think that was Sister Watts who said earlier, so she asked the Holy Spirit to guide her through the day or speaking directly to Jesus, whether you call him Jesus, Jesus, Joshua, Yeshua, Messiah, Savior, Deliverer. I think he knows who he is. You know, I, I think we waste time arguing about those things because none of those things, you do understand, none of those things are really his name. They are functions of his grace. And, but that's a, another study. All right, so. so I was about to say, is it on the slide? No, I'm just yeah, kidding. no, that's, that's a whole nother study down the road. But what, remember, we're speaking to, to people who are interested in learning more about God, who always had these questions Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and people who just want to get it right in their minds and all of you are helping them, uh, no matter when they watch this video, they're going to appreciate the comments that you have given, 
uh, today. So he, he, we're getting closer to the end now. So Diane, do you mind reading? Is you the last person talking? Okay. The spirit will impress our minds, leading us to a clear understanding of the Bible and how its lessons apply to our lives today. Then he will give us the power to live the truths we have learned. So this is a powerful statement. When Jesus talks about making disciples of men, I think that uh, the mega church construct has uh, kind of warped what Jesus meant. For instance, I'm a preacher. And I haven't done my job until many of you are powerful preachers. You know, the, the idea is that the gospel doesn't belong exclusively to me. It belongs to us to give to the world. So there's nothing that should make a preacher happier than to work himself out of a job. That yeah. everybody in the congregation, for the most part, become powerful preachers who right, rightly divide the word because the, the power at work has never been the preacher to begin with. It has been the spirit of God. You have that saying, much prayer, much power. Well, it works for study too. Much time in studying the word means much power comes out of it. And that's not exclusive to me, we supposed to apply these lessons to ourselves. And the more we do, the clearer the Bible becomes to us and the easier it is for us to communicate it with others. And so I wanna to get to the next thing because I'd rather discuss this than what I just talked about. Um, okay, so Diane, if you can continue, please. This is the end of that statement. When we feel guilty for our sins and repent for them or repent of them, it's because the Holy Spirit has been at work in our lives. Okay. Okay, so we have people who may see this and they're not, they didn't talk to God at all. They're just living their lives. How would you explain this to them? Well, it's like I said before, Pastor, uh, the Holy Spirit is our conscience. You know, he'll let you know, you know, that ain't right. Why are you trying to do that? Why are you even thinking about doing that? Okay, so so another way of saying that then is conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. Yes, ex yeah. absolutely. So, so let me ask you this, Sister Donna, is conviction exclusive to Christians? Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. So who can be convicted then? Everybody. Anybody can be convicted, <laughs> okay. but they have to be willing. Okay. Well, well, before we get to action, let's talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. The initial steps is to convict. And so I guess what we're trying to say to a seeker is that they've already encountered the Holy Spirit. Would you agree with that, Donna? Uh, at some point, yes. Now, whether or not they recognized it for what it was, that's another issue. Well, but we're I would... explaining it to them now, right? We're explaining it to them that those times where you felt, where they, whoever they may be, felt guilty about something that they've done wrong, mm -hmm. it was a calling, a tugging of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right. I like the word woo, wooing yes. of the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay. He has drawn us with cords of loving kindness for a very long time. Hmm. Well, you know, and that works with some people, but everybody don't have the loving kindness and the wooing going on. Some people got to be kicked. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, but that too, that too is a testimony to the long suffering of God because we are uh, and when we, when, we, when we were on the previous slide about being converted and someone said that uh, we have to continually be converted about different things, even though we've come down the road, all that says to me is how good God is, that we could be that stubborn, 
that bl narrow-minded, that blinded, and yet the Holy Spirit continues to work with us. I see. Yeah, that. So, yeah, but you know, Pastor, I, I also believe that even before any of this takes place, you have to to know where you are in the scheme of things. You know, you have to first of all um, be willing to recognize that you are a sinner. You know that we're sinners. Okay. And you got to know that, you, in other words, you can't always think that you write all the time and then have something like this work for you. Okay. Because, well, because you're not, it's going to be your idea. Oh, that was my idea. I just knew that it was wrong. So, you know. Well, the previous slide disagrees with you, Donna. Uh -oh. You see this on this slide? It's, it's because the spirit has been working on our hearts, giving us the desire to learn. Remember this slide? Yes, yes, so but I'm even, saying, even but I'm saying you have to, to recognize it. Yeah, yeah. Well, even the want to, even the want to, even the recognition of what it is, is all of that is the Holy Spirit because it's not our nature. That's true. So, so we have to give him credit. And that, that brings us to this particular slide. Uh, and, uh, and, and no, this is all good because people will watch and say, oh, the lights will come on. Look at this slide. Everything we know about God and Jesus, we understand more clearly because the Holy Spirit quietly and humbly, remember somebody said wooing. Wooing is not abrasive or disrespectful, is it? It's a, it's a form of, of a, you know, for lack of a better word, a little bit of a seduction, meaning that a convincing, you know, and that's not abrasive. That's loving. That's that voice that just, oh man, I wish I could just do this without feeling bad, but I know it's wrong. So I do feel bad. Even a good example is, have you ever, and I'm just speaking in general, have you ever had the wonderful, exuberating feeling of telling somebody off? They've been asking for it. They just kept on with you and kept on with you. And one day before you knew it, you just let loose. And it just, and once you got going, it felt so good you couldn't stop yourself. You had an out-of-body experience. <laughs> what happened shortly after that? You start feeling, oh, wait a minute, I really shouldn't have gone that far because that's not me. I was out of control. And I, you start, you know what I'm saying? You start feeling some sort of guilt or regret. And um, that is attributed to the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, uh, Sister Val. The slide that we're on, mm -hmm. out of all that the Holy Spirit does for me, I really welcome the comfort. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, what do you mean by that? He comforts me. I mean, like right now, I'm about to have a breakdown. But he comforts me, you know. Mm. He talks me off the cliff. Mm. Amen. And it gives you refreshing tears. Remember that. Right. I remember that from your prayer class. Amen. Amen. Well, that's real, isn't it? That's real. Um, yeah, it is. We do need, remember I said, life is tough. And we do need, and God knows we need, something stronger and bigger and wiser than us to guide us through it. And so he said, I'm not going to leave you by yourselves. <sighs> when the comforter comes, right? He did that first description it, to the disciples is the comforter. When the comforter comes, he will lead you into all truth. Thank you so much, Val. All right. So, wow. I said this was going to be short <laughs> tonight. <laughs> but the discussion is good. I think that everybody who watches it will thoroughly enjoy this. So I thank you all for continuing to come. Go ahead, Dr. Pam. Okay. So one of the questions we had, and I'm... We ask, who should we pray to? What is mm -hmm. the answer? Oh, I'm getting to that. <laughs> oh, that's not that. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, it's right, in go. my final speech of the night when we get ready to close. I'm, 
I'm going to, uh, you, did you want to offer something? You, you had something in mind? Well, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll let you do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Smart lady. Smart lady. <laughs> okay. The spirit also strengthens the church and its members through spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So remember, we just had this conversation, several slides on how all of us, we need help because there are things we can see that we struggle with, but there's a whole bunch of things we can't see that we struggle with. And then we wanna get in a room full of other broken people. <laughs> so we certainly need the Holy Spirit as a gathering of people. And here, it's great to see that one of the things the Holy Spirit does is strengthens the church as a whole, uh -huh. and then it strengthens its members through spiritual gifts. And we're going to have a whole lesson on spiritual gifts, but right now, let's just say that is special, special skills and help that comes from God to advance his work. Some of these gifts are quite spectacular, while others are less dramatic. Right? Yet all of them are equally essential. It's that old saying that everything we need is in the house. Right? God makes sure that everything we need to make it as a group is present in someone or some people in the house. Go ahead, Sister Audrey. Sister Audrey, go ahead. We can't okay, hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, you know. Go ahead. Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Um, Barbara Brooks again. But you know, to, speaking of the Holy Spirit, I am experiencing his presence in my life more than ever. Because I have had uh, physical challenges I'm going through things I have never experienced before. I'm going through a situation with my husband, the closest person to me in this entire world. And I'm telling you, it is the Holy Spirit that keeps, it's that undercurrent that keeps me calm because I have um, people coming at me from all areas, you know, and it is just overpowering. It's more than words can say. Mm. But still that voice back in the deep confines of my heart that tells me, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. So with that, not only am I, because um, I, I, I'm not one that just openly verbalizes things all the time that's challenging in my life, but I've gotten to the point now that uh, it is the Holy Spirit that gives me boldness to even speak on them and requesting the prayers of the saints because you know, scripture tells us that the prayers of the righteous avail of much. And I said, Lord, I've tried to live according to your way. I know I haven't done all that you would have me to do. And I thank you. That is the Holy Spirit that lets me know that as I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And these are the things that I hide in my heart. And, it's a, and the Holy Spirit brings them to my remembrance. And it keeps me on, it, it keeps my spiritual equilibrium where it should be. Not my physical, not my mental, but my spiritual equilibrium. Amen. Amen. So, so this is an important lesson, Sister Brooks, in yes, reminding is. us all 
that just because you've been delivered, just because you've come into a knowledge of Christ and you've been walking with him for a long time, doesn't create a situation where you don't need the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Seasoned saints need the Holy Spirit just as much as ain'ts. <laughs> just yes, as sir. much as those in the beginning process. And thank you for, I, I, I know you're a private person, so thank you for, for sharing uh, that with us. Appreciate it. All right, so, so we're running up on the time now. And uh, so I want to make sure I put those references on the screen. We've been doing a lot of talking about these scriptures, uh, but we haven't always called them out. And so I'm letting them sit there for a minute for people who watch the playback. And I, for those who are listening and can't see, it's Ephesians 4.11, Romans 12, 6 through 8, 1 Corinthians uh, 12, uh, verses 4 through 11, 1 Corinthians uh, 28, uh, verse 31, chapter 13, 1 through 3. So... Uh, those are just some of the references. Uh, some of the members on the panel tonight have mentioned John chapter one. I've heard, uh, I think I've heard uh, Isaiah mentioned there. Uh, definitely Isaiah, I mean, uh, Psalm uh, 51. Uh, we can go on and on and on, but there are many references and thank God for technology. They will pull them right up in reference to the Holy Spirit. We started this study talking about Genesis 1, uh, about uh, creation. We'll do a lot about creation on next week. So going into the summary now, um, here's the thought that we want to leave you with. All of these gifts that the Holy Spirit has to offer there, uh, there is a way to disqualify yourself. And that is in grieving the Holy Spirit. Uh, earlier in the presentation, I talked about uh, an unintended consequence, consequence of megachurch. Do you know what the biggest problem is with megachurches? If it's not run correctly, and some of them are run correctly, by the way, they have a, a panel, a, a, a big, long staff of pastors. Uh, but if it's not run correctly, there's no accountability for members. And accountability is a good thing. Sometimes, as Donna mentioned earlier, the conviction needs to be created. People like big places so, so they can hide. And I'm not saying everybody in a big church feels that way, but a lot of people feel that way. They like to hide and then they won't get challenged on growing in Christ. And when, when we make up our mind that we have our pet sins or our pet situations uh, that we don't want to hear anything about, this is referred to as grieving the Holy Spirit. This is why um, pride, one of the things that God hates, can't be found in the church. Nothing limits the Holy Spirit more in lives than pride. For example, non-believers look for reasons to discredit the truth. And he said, well, that, you know, where'd that book come from? How do you know who wrote it? How do you know it's authentic? How do you know? How do you know this? And how do you know that? Did, 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 was it really John or was it really Paul? Somebody said Paul didn't. They, they're looking for reasons to discredit uh, the authenticity of it. And remember the questions I said we all should ask ourselves. Number one, is it true? Yeah, for instance, is drinking good for me? <laughs> you know, is, is running all over town and, and, and uh, leaving my wife or whatever it may be, is that good for me? Are drugs good for me? Is fighting good for me? You know, those things have nothing to do with who's telling you. But when we're not ready to try to do better, we try to discredit the messenger. That's what non-believers do. Believers 
search for elevation while sharing the truth. What do you mean by that, Pastor Hood? If we're not careful, we will find ourselves wanting our credit when the Holy Spirit is speaking. Remember, the primary function of the Holy Spirit is to make Jesus known, is to make the Father known. The Holy Spirit does not promote himself, even though he's equally God. The Holy Spirit leads by example. The Holy Spirit is never pumping his chest saying, look what I did. No, the Holy Spirit gives all glory to the Father and all credit to Jesus the Son. We should follow that example. We should follow that example and do what like Christ did. Remember what Christ did? Christ gave all the credit to his Father. He says, worship God and give glory to him. He said it was his Father working in him. We should be like him. But so often people lose sight of what the Holy Spirit is doing because the person who's delivering it, the messenger, is too busy enjoying hearing themselves talk. Mm. They want some of the credit when they should just let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does. He's much better at it than we are. In fact, we should have a healthy fear of messing up the message. Yeah. There'll never be a time where people can hear that still small voice if they're always listening to ours. Amen. We like to inject ourselves into everything. And I say we because it's human nature, but we have to be mindful while sharing good news to put the good news out front and we take a back seat. Many of you have seen me come into the pulpit. It doesn't mean that I haven't prayed. It means that I'm aware. If I don't get on my knees and talk to God, then I will take front and center, which means God will take a back seat. We got to do that in reverse. Amen. No more I, but Christ that lives in me. Then you notice after it's over with, I say, Lord, please forgive me if I mess that up in any way and don't charge it to the people you're trying to reach. Humility is non-negotiable. Humility in sharing the spirit of God with others is non-negotiable. When they asked Jesus how to pray, he could have said, can't you see what I'm working with? Didn't you see me turn the water into wine? Didn't you see me heal the leper? Didn't you see me feed 5,000? But he, he could have said that and he would have been right. But no, that's not what he said. He said, here's how you pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It was the perfect time for Jesus to take all the credit for himself. And who could argue with him? because he was going to die for the sins of the world. And last time I checked, none of us have done that. Lord have mercy. Jesus did. He died for the whole world. But when they ask him, how do you pray? He says, talk to the Father. That's where the power and the glory is. Speak to your Father, not just my Father. He's also your Father. Well, Jesus, where are you going? We need help. Yes, I'm leaving, but the other part of the Godhead is going to come and he's going to help you. I got to go so that he can come. You see how that works together. The comforter, the spirit of truth is going to help you. What is he going to help you do? Teach you how to talk to the father. Jesus showed us, he walks with us. The Holy Spirit urges us and teaches us from inside out. He's our schoolmaster. And the Father has all power and all glory in his hands. And he didn't think it robbery to say, pray in Jesus' name. You see, it's hard to tell where one starts and the other one ends because there's no pride. There's no leaven in any of them. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why not? 
I mean, hey, if anybody can brag is them, you know why? Because the work they're doing is not for themselves. They don't need anything. There's no lack in the father. There's no lack in the son. There's no lack in the spirit. So what are they doing here? They're here for you. All that they're doing is to save you and me. When it's all over, there is no excuse for any of us to be lost. What I love about God is it doesn't matter what language you speak, where you live, whether you can read or write, whether you're rich or poor, black or white, he loves us all the same and his spirit is everywhere. Amen. Well, thank y'all for coming tonight. And uh, I want to leave this solemn warning for those who are considering uh, just saying, wow, that was a good story. We thank the panel, uh, but I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, there's even people bold enough to say, I am God. I want to remind you of this story about Ananias and Sapphira. Yes. It was property that they owned themselves. It was their property. Therefore, when they sold it, it was their money. And they brought it to church and they lied about how much the property sold for. This is why pride is not allowed in the work of God. There's no sin in holding back some of your funds in a gift that you're gonna give. Nobody required the gift of them, but the lesson in the story is that they tried to bring falsehood into the work of God. They, pump, they wanted to pump their chest. They wanted people to say, look at the great thing they did. And listen to what Peter says in Acts 5, 8 and 9. Peter said to her, talking about the wife, because the husband has already been there. Tell me whether you and your husband sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, how is it? that you have agreed together, husband and wife, to put the spirit of the Lord to the test. Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. If we would have gone on to verse 10, it would have said, and she fell dead right then and right there. It's a serious thing uh, to grieve the Holy Spirit. So my encouragement tonight is not to scare our listeners, our watchers, but to warn you that the good that God is bringing you is not completely unconditional. He loves you. He will try and try and try to bring you to a place of safety. But if you refuse, if you refuse that again and again, then you will have to stand on your own merits. And as you've already learned in your life, no man or woman can stand on their own merits. We need the grace of God. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. So my invitation to you tonight is to invite the Spirit of God into your life. Next week, we'll be talking about creation and we wanna see you there, but for now, let's pray. Father, thank you for giving us this wonderful gift of your Holy Spirit. We thank you that he's not flesh and blood so that he can be there for me and be there for everybody else at the same time. And if we listen closely, we can hear him working in us. Lord, make us sensitive to your voice. Help us to know that not only are you real, but you have good intentions toward us. Teach us how to listen and follow. As the lesson said, give us the desire, the desire to love you and to obey you. Give us that wisdom that passes understanding. Give us the faith to trust you. And then Lord, we'll continue to give you the honor, the praise and the glory. It's in Jesus name we pray, amen, amen. All right, thank you all for coming. It wouldn't be the same without your participation. I know that people will be blessed by all of your comments and participation. Marie, I want to say something. 
Okay. Let me let me let me stop the recording. We will see you all on next Tuesday.